Hey, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to do a painting. It's got a mountain in it. I've got it sketched out. Um, we got a cabin in it. It's, I'm not sure you could call it a mountain painting, but anyways, this is what we're going to do today. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future videos. Thanks for watching. I got some liquid white across the top here. I got a little strip of it right here at the base of my mountains. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to use a one inch brush because I don't have liquid white on my mountains and this helps me get in between the mountains. I don't really want it on there. I'm just going to use this little brush so I can get in between the mountains. I want it really light behind my mountains. I like them, I like it kind of light behind my mountains. I think it looks a lot better. real light. I'll probably take a two inch brush when I'm when all is said and done here and blend it all but for now I just want to use this one inch till I get away from these mountains. Uh oh looks like I have a little yellow. You know what I touched this up here. Yeah we'll get rid of that. Don't take much of three off, does it? Yeah, I touched this. I got a piece right here, and my last painting had some yellow in it, apparently. <laughs> okay, let me pick this up here. Let me get me a little bit more thalo blue. That's what I'm using. I'll make it a little darker over in here. Yeah, I'll take my little, or my big, bigger two inch brush here in a minute. blend this out a little bit. Let me go ahead and get it. Let me make sure it's nice and clean. Even though I washed it, you never know. Stick a dirty brush up here with yellow on it, we'll have a green sky today. That wouldn't be good. We're just going to blend this out a little bit. Start in your lighter area and work out. Still see that yellow right there. Ain't that awful? Just touched it. That's all it took. Just a little touch. I'm afraid to get up there too high because it's right up here on this piece of wood. If my brush touches it again, you'll do it again. Okay, I think that's pretty good right there. I think we can work with that. Set that down. All right, let's get into the fun stuff here. Uh, I got two knives. I got a big knife and a little knife. I'm going to start with the big knife. I may need to switch, maybe. We'll see. I pre mixed some colors here. This is Prussian blue, black, and alizarin crimson. This is a typical mountain color. This mountain here is sitting a little further back, and all I did, I took that collar, put it over here, and put some white in it. That's all I did. So we're going to start right in here. And if anybody's seen my videos before, you'll know that I typically don't use liquid white on my mountains. And some of you are getting tired of hearing me say that, but I don't. And I say that because we have new people all the time. I have to repeat myself for people that's never seen the channel. Because if you're trying to paint at home and you're having trouble making your paint break, that's the reason why you're putting liquid white on there. You don't have to use it. Your paint will break so much easier if you don't use it. Give it a try and see what you think. That's 99% of the problem is you're using liquid white on your mountains. And until you get used to, do, to doing mountains, I would suggest not using it at all on their mountains. I always use it in my sky. Let's make it a little more peaked right there. This stretcher bar is always in my way right here. 
my knife friends are crossed out. I get these cheaper canvases because I paint so much. And boy, you can tell because they, they're not stretched real well. And that's why I hit that uh, bar right there every time. Now this is my lighter, my lighter mountain. And I'm using a lighter collar because it's further back. That's what I meant to say. It's further back. And that's probably enough paint right there on that. Um, I'll just put a little bit more on here. You got to use a little bit more paint if you don't have liquid white on it because it doesn't blend quite as easy. But I'm not sure this is called a mountain painting today. It has mountains in it. But you know, I mean, it don't necessarily mean it's a mountain painting just because it has mountains in it. Okay, I'm going to have to make this one a little taller now. Maybe put a bump in it right there. Yeah, it might be a little better. Yeah, this is the time to fix something, is right now. Don't wait till afterwards. Let me get me a one inch brush that's pretty clean. Okay. It don't have to be clean, but I don't want some strange color on it. And we're going to pull this out. See, I have liquid white here. You can tell how well it blends. It does blend great. I mean, it really does. But just don't put it on your mountains if you're having trouble making your paint break. Because, like I said, I rarely do. I, I rarely do because I'm trying to show people how to do it that are having trouble. And a lot of people do. Man, I did. I'm pretty sure everybody does when you first start trying to get your paint to break on these mountains. As you know, you see these other guys on there doing it. it they make it look easy because they've done a thousand paintings. And that's why it looks easy. With practice, anything's easy. But just starting out, I would, I'd probably say not to use it. Save yourself a whole lot of grief by not using it. Now this painting has a, this is a pretty good composition if I can get it the way we want it. These mountains are just extra. This is actually a picture though. I mean, there's this is a real picture that I'm painting today. I'm not just winging it like I normally do. <laughs> We're going to start with this mountain back here. I got some white with some brown mixed in it. Because this one is further back, it's going to not be as vibrant. It's going to be a little bit more dull, so to speak. Gonna, this mountain here is going to come in front of this one, so I'm probably going to take it over like that. And I'm actually going to use the same color for this, but on this mountain I might put a touch of white around the tops of it. But we're just going to bring her on down. I am barely touching it, literally. Literally barely touching. Gotta wipe your knife off because you're gonna pick up stuff from underneath. I always have my paper towels in front of me when I can. Start right here. Then I can just swipe it on the paper towels and clean it real quick. Just bring it on down. I, I probably should stop where I'm at. I probably don't want to come any further down. 
You'll see why here in a little bit. I got some land right here. That might be far enough down. That color actually looks pretty good, don't it? That brown and white. Find me a clean spot. I'm going to pull out some white. And on the, especially on the tops here, yeah, I was, I was thinking maybe I should do the back first. I don't think it makes any difference. I'm just going to put a little bit of white on these just to spice things up a little. Just a little. I don't, I don't necessarily want a lot. Paper towels are getting dirty. You don't want to put anything on your knife you don't want, like blue. <laughs> That's a blue on there a second ago. Yeah, I think that's probably okay right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this collar that I made for this back mountain, and I think I'm going to add a little white to it for our shadow area. I'm not sure how much to add just quite yet. We're going to test it. But that's all I'm doing. That way we don't waste paint. Let me just touch it somewhere. Yeah, I think you can see that. That's really why I do this. I just want to make sure you can see it at home. This will be our shadow. Stand back and take a gander at it here. I think it's light enough. As long as you can see it at home, that's what counts. It's almost, it's almost too dark. But I think, I think that's okay. We're going to do the same thing right here. Yeah, I'm barely touching this thing, literally. And I'm holding my knife kind of flat to the canvas. I'm not holding my knife like this. It's flat. I'm holding it flat. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent. I think that looks pretty good. I may put just a touch of white back there. Just a touch. Uh, I mean, just a touch. Okay. I think find a little bit more clean white. See this area right here. line was a little too straight for me. I don't like them straight. And you shouldn't either because they don't look natural. Straight lines just don't look natural. Maybe right here. Now what I'm going to do now I took a shop towel and I wiped the bottom of this because this is a hill. What I'm going to do now, I believe, is go ahead and start putting in some of these hills. I'm going to... Now this collar is going to blend, so don't, don't freak out on me here. <laughs> I know it's really yellow because it's pure yellow pretty much. I'm just going to place some collars where I think they're going to need it. I've got to be careful what I'm doing here because I'm going after a certain effect. Because there, there's like, uh, let's see, one, two, three, actually four little, four different hills. 
So I've got to, as these heels come down, they've got to get a little darker, then they're going to get lighter, a little darker, lighter, a little darker. Something like that. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Hopefully I can get this in here pretty quick. I'm just spreading this yellow around where I think I'm going to need it. You know, and I change, you know, I may change, change my mind about something here. I do it all the time. If your painting starts looking a little funky, you got to change something. I want those some yellow ochre. Ochre. And I'm just randomly placing it here and there. It's going to get darker as it comes down toward this next heel. Oops, got in the wrong stuff there, yellow. I want yellow ochre, not yellow. Yeah, this is a nice little picture. And, then, and like I said, this is an actual picture. I don't have any idea where it is. I wished I did. But it's pretty nice. Pretty nice looking place. And we'll start getting some green. And then I'm going to take my one inch brush after I do all this. You, those of you that have watched my videos before know how I do it. I just take my one inch brush and I mix it all up because that way it gives me random colors. This is how I do it. There's a million ways to do things. But this is how I do it. I've always done it this way. I like it. I think it's nice. It gives me a nice random mix of stuff. And then I wind up taking my fan brush going over the entire thing again. Let's see for the foreground down in here. I'm mainly going to use some ochre and green and probably some blue. And let's get some more green down in here. Start darkening it. And let's take some Prussian blue. Throw down in here. Yeah, my objective today is get some color down on the canvas. That's my objective. And if I can get this painted in today, That'll be good. This is later in the evening. I've worked today and I'm just trying to... I feel like I need to paint every day just about. If I don't, I feel like I'm missing something. I've done it so much, I feel like I've something's missing. It's weird, ain't it? And like I said, I, I'm doing this now. I may change my mind. I may look at this and think, man, it looks terrible. But, I don't think so, but I might. I change my mind all the time. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Let's find us a clean brush. And I'm going to start in the yellows. Actually, that's got some blue in it. I might start in this yellow. I'm going to start mixing. to start up here. It's okay if it gets in the blue. It's perfectly fine. Blue and yellow make green. So we're, so we're good. It's all good. Start right here. I'm gonna mix this up. Before I get into too much of the blue. Let me finish this right here. Once you get into the blue, it's it's blue. It's not going to change. It's going to get bluer and bluer. I'll get as much as I can before I get into the blue. Okay, I think that's all I can get really before I get into the blue. So let's go ahead and start getting into the blue. 
I may have to take a smaller brush and get next to these edges. I'm pretty sure I will now that I'm looking at it. This gives you a really nice variety of color. I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to finish this out right here because this is too big. I'll be right back. All right, I got everything put in here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a shop towel. Paper towel work the same. And I'm just going to wipe some of this excess stuff off here. That's all I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing that because I just wanted a stain. I wanted something on the canvas. You can't. I mean, you got to have something down. You can't just start working on a finished product without having a base. You got to have something down on here. And this is what you call putting collar on the canvas, and that's what I did. Now I've, I've got the collar that I wanted, and I'm going to go over all this with the fan brush. But I want to get this excess off. Too much paint is not good. And these shop towels work really well, man. I mean, this is this is probably the best thing you could use, to be honest. But paper towels will work too. I've used many paper towels on this stuff. But this is all I'm doing, and for the rest of the evening, I'm just going to probably frame in this little building here, and then I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll start on something else. I might go ahead and finish the grass up tomorrow. This um this composition has pine trees, and I mean it looks really nice. And that's what we're going to try to do is make it look really nice. But that's what I'm going to do the rest of the day. I'm just going to work on this right here and get it framed in and painted in. Not framed. I'm not building it. I'm painting it. Get it, get it painted in. And that'll be my day for today. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to finish working on this right here for now. All right, I'm back and I'm working. I'm putting some grass in. I got two different fan brushes here. Um, and I'm going to start working right up in here. I got one fan brush that I'm trying to keep clean with yellow on it. And the other one's kind of dirty. It's got some dark collars in it. I'm trying to keep one of them clean though. <laughs> you got to have a clean fan brush. When I say clean, clean yellow. I'm just, this is what I'm doing. This is going to have pine trees in it and stuff, but I want to get this, this has to go in first. And as you can see, I'm trying to create different planes. This is a hill. I want it to make, a real, make it look real obvious. This is a hill, and this is why I did it the way I'm doing it. If that makes sense. It's, late, it's getting a little later in the evening. It probably don't make sense. Barely makes sense when I say it. <laughs> Barely makes sense to me. Um, let's see here. I'm not going to do this yet. I'm going to take my dirty brush. And I am going to put some yellow ochre or some sap green in it. And I'm going to start working my way down here. Throw a little bit of this up in here, but this is going to have pine trees all in it. It'll be, you know, it'll it'll look a lot better when the pine trees go in. I think it looks good now, but it'll look better. Pine trees. This is supposed to be a higher elevation that you're looking at here, because you can see the mountains and higher elevations usually always have pine trees. So we're going to have some pine trees scattered about in this painting. Getting a little darker as we're coming to the next hill. So we're going to throw a little bit of this up in there too, just to blend it a little bit. Yeah, I really like this picture. It's it's a nice one. We can just make it look like it. We'll be doing good. 
so we're going to try to do and see once once I get that done then I'm going to take my yellow and go underneath of it I'm trying to keep this brush clean one clean one not see just like so I like use, you could use a one inch brush if you want. I, I just really prefer a fan brush. I just like how they, I like the texture of it. I mean, look at that. I mean, I think that looks great to me, you know. Someone else might look at it and think, oh gosh. But you know, <laughs> I wouldn't think someone would do that, but you never know. Everybody has different tastes. Everybody's taste is different. There's a million ways to do things, but you're just after that final result. That's what you want, the final result. See, look at the different colors in this right here. I mean, I, that just looks really nice, I think. Just scatter you some here and there, just mix, mixing of colors. Okay, I just want to show you what I'm doing, and I'm going to continue to do this all the way down, what I'm doing right here. Two fan brushes, yellow and then a dirty one. All right, let's start putting in some pine trees. Let's go ahead and do that. I think I'll hold my palette this time. I've got my picture that I'm looking at here. And I think we have a row that starts right here and goes all the way down. So we're going to start on that. Got some black and some green. And these are not real big starting out right here. I'll probably start at, uh, well, I'll put one right here. This will get us going to figure out where we want all of them. This will get us started. These, these trees, like I said, they're kind of just scattered here and there. There's not a, what you call an order. <laughs> There's just one here and one there. Get some more black in this. I'm just going to put some where I think they need to be. Let me take one more look real quick. Okay, they come clear down to here. So it's going to take a couple minutes. But we'll get it. One way or the other, we're going to get it. Just takes a little time. I'll put one a little higher up there. Offset them a little bit. Maybe this one's up there with that one. You know, we may change these time work time it's all said and done. I may add more. I don't know. We're just putting them in. Put one little close to that one. You have to stand back and take a look at your painting sometimes to see what's going on. I'm standing real close to it. And, I mean, it looks fine from here, but if I stood back there, I may think, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> you know, you just have to you have to stand back and look at it. So I'm going to put some of these in, and then that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand back and take a look and see what I think. And as I said, this is a really nice, really nice composition. Just as long as I can get it somewhat close to the picture, I think everything will be fine. Got to keep reloading your brush. This eats up your paint quick on your brush. I got a little baby brush. This came with the set. I didn't order this. It just came with the set. I wanted a certain, I wanted a bigger brush and I couldn't, I had to buy a whole set. And you know, you get all different sizes when you buy a whole set. And I thought, man, what am I ever going to use this thing for? Sure enough, I've used it on two paintings now. <laughs> 
this little brush. I think I'm starting to like it. You know, sometimes you got to try things. I mean, you just don't know what you're going to like till you try it. Okay. I'll probably bring this on down to here, and then I'll, off camera, I'll put a few more in, because this is taking a while. And then we'll just keep putting our little pine trees in. There, this whole thing it isn't packed with pine trees. There's just there's some there's a couple big ones here, a couple over in here, and maybe one behind this house, and that's probably about it. So it's not like there's a ton of them or anything. They're just here and there. Here and there and everywhere. Okay, I'm just going to keep doing this for a little bit and I'll be back. Alright, I got some of these pine trees put about where I want them. I may add more. I mean, it looks like it needs more, but this is... I'm just following the picture. <laughs> this, is, this is about what it has. To create these shadows, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm just... I have really... This brush had some black on it where I put these pine trees in. But I'll wipe most of it off because there's plenty on here. I'm just pushing up on the bottom. See, and it's, it's actually making its own shadow. I'm just pushing, because the sun's coming down this way. So shadow would be on your left. It's pretty much creating its own shadow just by me doing this. And that's what I've done all the way up right there. See, it makes its own shadow. Of course, this shadow is going to be off the edge. You won't be able to see it. And this one, I'll, I'll go ahead and do this, but the house is kind of in the way to see this shadow. But these, you should be able to see the shadow. Like I said, I'm just pushing up on it and just working it across. Everything has a shadow, don't it? If you need more black, just get up in the tree a little bit more and you'll, you'll get more on your brush. You just push up in the tree and you'll get more. And we still got to highlight these trees too. I think I might go around and put a little bit more green on these. And I'll probably need to work on this shadow down here a little bit more. And and work on this building a little bit more. I, I'm giving it the shingle effect on top right here. Alright, I've started highlighting some of these trees. I went ahead and got those. Now, you got to have a paper towel in one hand. got to have your brush in the other hand. Because you got to wipe your brush off after every time. I'm going to go ahead and do this one, I think. I'm just taking some yellow. And I'm just barely touching. The sun's coming down from the, this direction, so I'm touching the right side of the tree. Just to give it a little pop. And then I'm going to stand back and take a look at it. You always have to stand back and take a look. But that's all I do. I just this is exactly how I do it. Each and every time I do a pine tree. I think it looks good and it makes them stand out pretty well. You can define which tree is in front of the other one. But you gotta wipe your brush off each and every time you each and every time you uh, touch the tree, because man, the trees are wet. <laughs> I just put them in. As you know, you see me do it.
I really like how that looks when you do that. Just makes them stand out. Let's see, I'll take this and I'll put this tree in front of this one. So I'll do this top area of this tree. Yeah, don't take long for your brush to get messed up. That's why you got to keep wiping it off. Just keep wiping. Always have a paper towel in your hand. Cause man, they're handy. Handy, handy, handy. Let me take a look. That's probably okay. That's probably okay right there. Give me another paper towel. And let's get these trees over here real quick on the other side. Let me start right here. You got to get a pretty good load of paint on here too. Otherwise it's not going to stick. Simply because these trees are so wet. And for no other reason, it's because the trees are so wet. And just keep doing this. I might add some more pine trees. Man, this painting needs a little something more. Even though this is exactly what the picture looks like. Sometimes you got to make your own adjustments. And I might add some more pine trees somewhere. Do something to, down in there. It just needs something else. There's just a lot of hills. Which is okay. I might think of something here in a little bit add to it. All right. I'm not sure what I might do next. I might just think of something to add to it. That might be my plan. I'll be back. All right, folks. Looks like that's a wrap. What I did is I added some pine trees here. Five. Added three there. Put a fence, a chimney, and some shutters. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future videos. Thanks for watching.